Today's message is called Thank You. For those of you who keep an eye on the teaser, you will see that this is a different title because God simplified what I want to say. It's basically the same message, but in a much more simple package. The message for today, and I hope the message that you take away with today is thank you. Gratitude. Gratitude is so important. This is my last sermon as the pastor of Grace Christian Church, and there is sorrow in this moment. Um, true sorrow, but more than anything else, my heart is filled with gratitude. I'm just so thankful for you, for what God has done in this place. I'm thankful um, for this story. I was just telling Dale that I used to come to this church when I was a college student. And, and, and Ms. Rosetta, you know, I was a hot mess. <laughs> Whatever is beyond rough around the edges, I mean, that's where I was. And me and my friend Mo Dog we used to come here on the bus. And me and Mo Dog was we were at the IBEW Hall. And we used to, it's like a little arena, it's a mini arena. And we used to say, we used to way in the back, like all the way up, all the way up in the last row. And me and Mo would have our feet up on the chair in front of us, completely knocked out sleeping, just out. And that was my church experience <laughs> in college. And my God has a sense of humor, you know this, right? <laughs> so it's like, mm, I see you, okay. I'm gonna do something funny, right? And so now I am the pastor of that church whose service I used to sleep through. <laughs> Glory to the living God for having a sense of humor. But that's an amazing story, and I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful that many of you saw me when I was a hot mess, and you see what God can do <laughs> when someone yields to his leading. Amen? Amen. And I'm thankful um, for the time that I got to see you all grow up in a world become more of who you're supposed to be. I'm greatly influenced in my leadership thinking and development. I've been greatly influenced by someone named Max Dupree, who once said the first responsibility of a leader is to define reality. Uh, what he means by that is to say who we are, where we are, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. The last is to say thank you, and in between, the leader is a servant. Uh, Max Dupree, he passed. He was a Christian. Um, and hugely successful in business. And he wrote a book called Leadership Jazz, which was a, a book about being a leader, but it was all about Jesus, right? <laughs> he was very unapologetically saying that in, uh, in other places, it was all about Jesus. And this is something that he said. And so since this is my last day as a pastor of Grace Christian Church, I'm going to perform my duty and say, thank you. Somebody say thank you. I have come to appreciate gratitude a bit more as I've been preparing to lead. I see clearly that when a leader says thank you, what he or she is saying is that I see you and I care. What they are saying is that you matter and what you're, you've done matters because you have contributed, whatever we are now, whatever we have become, you've contributed to that. You've helped to make us what we are, and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for your sacrifice, and I'm grateful for your love and your care. It has all mattered. And I don't know how God did it. I don't know how he brought us all together, how he conspired to have all these timelines match up to bring us all here for this moment. But I know that because he did that, the universe will never be the same. This community will never be the same. The people in this room will never be the same. And I'm grateful for that. I'm very thankful. So somebody say thank you. Thank you. Gratitude can change how we see our present and our past. And it gives us hope for our future. Gratitude shifts our perspective from what we're losing to what we have gained by the grace of God. If you go through your life and you focus only on what you feel you've lost or what you think you're missing, there is
Not the most people here hate them. I was contacted by some folks that said, I, I just can't be there. I can't, I, can't, I can't do the bots, right? It's hard. But there can be contentment in this moment. There can be if we start to think about what we have gained, what God has given us. I, I pray that in this moment, that gratitude and joy overshadows the pain, the sorrow. I pray that even though we be sad in our hearts, we may be hurting, but we realize that we've been blessed so richly. Our cup truly runs over. We have a lot to be thankful for. Somebody say thank you. Thank you. This brings to mind something that Paul said. And as I was thinking about what to speak about this prayer, I couldn't have said it better myself. It's exactly what I'm feeling in this moment. So if you could turn with me to, to Philippians chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 3 through 6. Philippians 1, verses 3 through 6. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 That's a good word. Paul looked at his time with the church in Philippi with gratitude. It not only caused him to pray with joy, but it gave him hope in the power of Christ to complete what Jesus had started. Do you see that? Because he was thankful, he prayed with joy. And listen, I don't want your prayers for me to stop. <laughs> I'm greedy for those prayers. Continue to pray for me, but pray in joy and gratitude for what God has done and will continue to do. And it gave them hope. It gave Paul hope for the future that God would carry out his work until completion. And there is peace in that. Because I don't know, like Les was saying, I don't know what the future brings. None of us do. But we know to which to whom the future belongs. Yes. And we know that he's promised to bring his work to completion. So whatever that future is, know that your work is complete. Are you tracking that? It may not be what you want. It may not be what you expected. It may not even be what you hoped for. But it's what is good. And it's what is complete. That's why Paul later on could even write, like, I am poured out like a drink offering. I, I don't have much left, but he found peace in that he, is, he has run his race. He has done the work that Jesus gave him to do. It's all about him, y'all. Always, always, it's all about him. So I, I pray that in this moment, that joy would start to bubble up for God, what God has done in this congregation. I am filled with gratitude, and, and I hope you are filled with gratitude. I hope there's something in your heart that says thank you, Lord. Somebody say thank you. Thank you. We've had so many moments together where we saw God show up and do great things. <laughs> When I am grateful for God's goodness, I am confident that he will complete the work he began in Grace Christian Church, individually and collectively. He has been so good to us, and I have no reason to think he's going to stop being good to us collectively and individually. I know so many of your stories, and I wish I could have time to tell them all, but I've seen God moving in your lives. I've seen God do amazing things, and I believe he's going to keep doing that. 
And I know that he's going to continue to bless this church because that's just who he is. That, that alone fills me with gratitude that the almighty creator God of heaven and the earth cared enough about us to gather us together and give us a purpose in Christ. Can you believe that? The one who made galaxies and stars and volcanoes and hurricanes decided to bring this group together, to give them a purpose, to allow them to participate in the work that he was doing, and he called it good. Man, that makes me feel so much gratitude. Makes me want to say thank you. Somebody say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if you want to thank God for that dance. <laughs> We may we may have questions for God about what we just saw with that thing. But he's good even there, even there. So instead of saying goodbye to each other just for today, let's say thank you, Lord. Goodbyes are hard. But what we really mean and what we really truly want to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you for what he's done. He may close one door, but he is so good that he always opens another, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. And he will finish the work he began in you. We have seen miracles in this place. Some of you sitting here are the recipient of miracles. You're here today by God's will and God's will alone. And we have so much to be thankful for. So as I come to the end of this message, I just want to say, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you.